Okay, boys and girls, we're back for part two of our exam six review. Can you believe we're almost three-fourths of the way through the school year? It's gone by just like that, hasn't it? Okay, so please memorize your solubility rules. You've had more than two weeks to get these squared away. I hope you've taken the time to learn them. If you're not, if you haven't learned them, you're not ready for the test and you're not going to do very well on the exam. So take time to do that over the next couple of nights. So Let's practice this. We did this in the lab several times and I did several demos for you. So if I take silver nitrate and calcium chloride, uh, silver, remember, is always plus one when it forms a bond. Nitrate's a polyatomic. It's NO3 negative one. And folks, you'll have access to this polyatomic ion chart that you've been using now throughout the years. So you won't have to memorize those. And you'll also have a periodic table to use. All right. Calcium, as you recall, is 2 plus. Chloride is 1 negative. So let's see. The molecular formula would be AgNO3 Aq plus CaCl2 Aq. And these are all double replacement reactions. So silver will get together with chloride. Ag plus and Cl minus makes AgCl. We'll leave that parentheses blank for just a sec. And Ca2 plus and NO3 negative form Ca parentheses NO3 2. Okay, now this is where we need to know our solubility rules. AgCl. Let's see. Chlorides, bromides, and iodides are mostly soluble, except for silver, mercury, and lead. So silver chloride is not soluble, so we put an S there, which stands for solid. We'll form a precipitate. Those guys will stick together in water. Uh, the next rule, all nitrates are soluble, no exceptions, so that guy is an AQ. Let's balance this by putting a 2 in front of AgCl and a 2 in front of AgNO3. Now let's write this ionically. And ionically, if these ionic compounds are soluble, we dissociate the ions. So we have two silver nitrates, which dissociate into two Ag plus ions and two nitrate ions. My calcium chloride is soluble, so that dissociates into a calcium 2 plus ion and two chloride ions. On the product side, my AgCl is a solid. That means, kiddos, it sticks together. Water's not strong enough to separate those ions from each other. And the calcium nitrate dissociates. So I have calcium 2 plus Aq and 2 nitrates Aq. So that is my full-on ionic. Now, are there any spectator ions here? That means they're the same on this side as they are on the other side. So it appears to me the calcium two pluses are the same and the two nitrates are the same. Boom. So I've canceled out my spectators. Whatever is remaining is my net ionic. So in this case, I have two Ag pluses, Aq, and two Cl negatives, Aq, and they react to form, oh, let's see, oh, I didn't balance that. I had two AgCls there, sorry. So I have two AgCl's that I produce. Now this is a one to one to one ratio, but if you left it as two to two to two, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, and that's my net ionic. Now, the next one, sodium sulfate and barium chloride. Here I just want the molecular and net ionic. So sodium, when it forms an ionic bond, is Na+. Sulfate's a polyatomic SO42 negative. Barium is Ba2+, plus and chloride is Cl negative. So sodium sulfate would be Na2SO4, and barium chloride would be BaCl2. Okay, double replacement, so sodium and chloride will get together. So we'll have Na plus and Cl negative, that forms NaCl. We'll leave the parentheses blank for just a sec. And Ba2 plus and SO4 two negative get together to form BaSO4. Now let's use our solubility rules. Um, this has sodium in it, and every ionic compound that has a group 1 ion in it is always soluble. There are no exceptions. So that's Aq. And the sulfate rule. Sulfates are mostly soluble except for silver, mercury, lead, calcium, strontium, and our friend barium. So that's a solid there. To balance this, we'll put a 2 in front of NaCl. So that's my molecular, and it's balanced. 
Now, the net ionic we can do quickly. Here's the solid that I make. So I'm just going to put that on the right-hand side. That's my solid. And what ions is it made from? Well, it's obviously made from Ba2 pluses and SO4 two negatives. So Ba2 plus Aq and SO4 two negative Aq. And you're done. Okay? All right, make sure you can do these. We did several in our notes. We did set, we did 55 in our lab, if you remember. So you guys should be pretty good at these by now. Take some time to learn your solubility rules. If you don't know them before you get to the exam, oh boy, bad things are going to happen. Okay, and then review pages 112 to 115 of your notes. That deals with colligative properties. Remember, colligative properties depend upon the number of particles, not the type. And there are four that we talked about. Vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, and osmotic pressure. So pick the time to go over those properties and learn them. Now, we're going to do uh, a boiling point elevation and freezing point depression problem. So let's say I have 87.5 grams of glucose and it's dissolved in 500 grams of water. I want to calculate the boiling and freezing points of my solution. So let's see, for the boiling point, I'm going to use delta T sub B, that's my change in boiling point, equals K sub B times the molality. Now the boiling point constant is 0.512 degrees Celsius per molal. And I would give that to you on the test. That's the boiling point constant for water. Now if I gave you another solvent besides water, it would have a different boiling point constant. Now I need to find the molality of this. Now I give you grams of solute and keto or grams of water. So let's find the molality. So we're going to take my 87.5 grams of C6 H12O6 and we're going to go from grams to moles of C6 H12O6. And so let's see, we've got six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. Let me see if I can do that quickly for you. Uh, each carbon is 12.01. And then we're going to add to that 12 hydrogens. So each hydrogen is 1.01. And we're going to add to that six oxygens. And each oxygen is 16.00. So I get 180.18 grams per mole. Okay, now that gets me to moles of solute. Now I divide that by kilograms of solvent. So I have 500.0 grams, which is 0 0.5000 kilograms. And this gives me the molality of my solution. So let's find that. 87.5, oops, let's clear that out. 87.5 divided by 180.18, divided by 0 0.5000 kilograms, I have a molality of 0 0.971 uh, molal. Okay? So, I'm going to take my boiling point constant times my molality. So, 0 0.512 degrees Celsius per molal unit times 0.971 molal units, and this gives me my boiling point change. Looks like I'm a lot of three sig figs here. So 0.512 times 0.971 gives me 0.497 degrees Celsius. And that would be my boiling point change. Now the normal boiling point of water is 100.00 degrees Celsius. So my new boiling point would be 0.497 degrees Celsius higher than that. Remember, it's boiling point elevation. Okay, freezing point depression, similar equation. Delta T sub F equals K sub F times the molality. Now the K sub F for water is negative 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal unit. So let's go ahead and do that. Negative 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal unit times the molality, still 0.971 molal. And let's see how much my freezing point is going to change by. Uh, negative 1.86 times 0.971 molal gives me negative 1.81 degrees Celsius. So my freezing point will drop 
by 1.81 degrees Celsius. Now the normal freezing point of water, of course, is zero. And if I take 1.81 degrees from that, the new freezing point of water in this solution will be negative 1.81 degrees Celsius. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now, make sure, I think it's on page 114 and 115 of your notes, examples 16 and 17, deal with finding the molecular weight by freezing point depression. Heads up, I will put one of those on the test. Not going to do one for you on your review sheet. You need to take the time and review that on your own. Okay. All right. Just a few more things here. Some practice multiple choice. If you guys remember on your exams, you do quite well normally on the free response, but you're horrible at the multiple choice. So I thought I'd practice a few with you on this particular review. So let's just do a few. Number one, which gas is most soluble in water? And I have think. Like dissolves like. If you remember that rule, that means polar dissolves polar, and nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. So water is polar. Very good. Water is a bent molecule, if you remember. Here's the Lewis structure. And we have a negative end and a positive end of water. Water is polar. It has a dipole. So which one of these has a dipole? Well, hydrogen is H2. That's its Lewis structure. Dipole cancels. It's the same electronegativity for each atom. Methane, kiddos, is CH4. And it has a Lewis structure that looks like this, trying to squeeze it in there. It's a tetrahedral shape, and the dipoles all cancel. So that's nonpolar. Nitrogen gas is N2. There's a triple bond between the two. And once again, the same atom. There's no electronegativity difference between them. So that means that's nonpolar. But ammonia, that's my answer, has this shape. It's a trigonal pyramid, if you remember. And when you have that situation, there's an uneven distribution of the charge. And so we end up with a negative end and a positive end. So ammonia is quite polar. So since water's polar and ammonia's polar, I would choose ammonia as being the most of these, uh, the most soluble of these four. Okay. All right. Number two, what volume of 0.15 molar HCl can be made from 7.5 mils of concentrated HCl? Think your magic rule of dilution. That's the M1V1 equals M2V2. So um, I'm starting with 12 molar. 12 molar. And let's see. It says I have 7.5 mils of it. All right. And I want to turn it into 0.15 molar. And it says, what volume can I make? Well, let's plug and chug and find out. So we have 12 times 7.5 divided by 0.15. And I end up with 600 milliliters. Now, by the way, that only has two sig figs, so I should probably say 6.0 times 10 to the second milliliters. But that equals 0 0.60 liters. See, my unit over here is in liters. So I want my answer in liters. So I'm going to look for 0 0.60 liters, and it looks like letter B is my answer. So I can make 600 mils of my diluted solution, or 0 0.60 liters. Now, I noticed a lot of you folks, when you were working on this review sheet in class, you chose letter D, and you weren't being careful about units. That's milliliters. That says liters, so be careful, okay? All right, uh, let's see. Number three, what's the molality of a solution? So molality, it's a small letter M, equals moles of solute. In this case, it's KNO3 divided by kilograms of solvent. In this case, it's water. So I have 5.10 moles of solute and 4.47 kilograms of water. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Let's plug and chug, see what we get. Looks like 5.1 divided by 4. My answer is going to be bigger than 1, so it's either C or D. Let's check it out. 5.1 divided by 4.47. Looks like I get 1.14 molal. So the answer is letter D. Make sure you can do simple calculations like that. 
Number four, I really should have rethought this. I don't like the reactants that I have here, but we'll deal with it anyway. I'm having a solution of barium carbonate, which technically doesn't form a solution very well, but we're going to pretend. And this, uh, I have a solution of iron sulfate, and that would be a nice solution. So Fe2, SO4, 3. AQ. Now these are all double replacement, so barium and sulfate would get together. Remember kiddos, barium is 2 plus, sulfate as SO4 2 negative. So BaSO4 would be a product, and then iron and carbonate would get together. Now here iron is 3 plus. If you don't know why, you might want to review your notes on how to find the charge of a transition metal ion. Carbonate is CO3 2 negative. So we're going to make Fe2, parentheses, CO33. All right, let's practice our solubility rules. Oh, we've seen this one already. All sulfates, or most sulfates, are soluble, except for silver, mercury, lead, calcium, strontium, and barium. So that's a solid. Okay, so I know barium sulfate is going to be a product, so it can't be letter B, and it's not going to be none of those. So now it's either A or C. What's our rule for carbonates? Yeah, that's right. All carbonates are soluble, or excuse me, all carbonates are insoluble, except for group one and ammonium. So this guy's insoluble, that's a solid also. So both these guys are going to precipitate out. Okay? So please, kiddos, make sure you take time to learn your solubility rules. Alrighty, if you can do the stuff that's on this worksheet, plus the re reading and the vocabulary that they went, we didn't necessarily go over, you will do fine on this exam. Turns out it's a 163-point exam. Don't take this lightly. Take some time, review your notes, do the problems, and you'll be just fine. Okay? Good luck. Remember, you can do hard things. I promise. Study. See you in class. Bye-bye.